Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. <laughs> These are my purple beans. I can't actually remember what they're called. It's blau something. I'll put it up there. And when you cook them, they turn green. And we like to saute them with just a little bit of garlic. We've grown Blue Lake, Bush, and Pole beans in the past. But these beat them. And we'll grow these from now on. You'll have to forgive my goats for their loudness. I did just give them new hay and some treats. So I'm hoping that they'll kind of quiet down during the course of this video. But I'm actually really excited about what I'm gonna show you guys today. It's gonna to save you a lot of money if you have to tattoo your rabbits for show or for record keeping or any of that. Because tattoo ink and tattoo needles are very expensive. And I, for one, am feeling the effects of finances during the, this day and age. I am definitely always looking for ways to save money, and this is one of them. This is one way that I can continue tattooing my rabbits without paying $5 a needle or without paying, you know, whatever it is per teeny tiny thing of tattoo ink. Um, I'm going to show you how to make tattoo ink, and I'm going to show you how to make your own tattoo needles at home that will fit uh, standard rabbit tattoo pens. I at least know that it fits TB Tat. I'm not 100% sure about the other brands, but I'm sure that you can make it work depending on your scenario. You just might have to uh, modify it just a little bit, but it should work for you still. So for creating tattoo ink, we use two things. We use activated charcoal and vodka. Yes, I keep a bottle of vodka out in my barn. <laughs> for the purpose of tattooing my rabbits. So activated charcoal can actually serve a multitude of purposes, but in this case, we're using it to make black tattoo ink. I don't know at this point how you would make different colors of tattoo ink. I'm sure you can find a way. I just know how to make black, and really black is all I really would want to make anyway. Uh, I've tried colored tattoo inks in the past, and I'm just not like a huge fan of how they look over time and I just prefer the look of black ink. I'm going to show you how to mix it together. It's very, very simple. So I have these little mason jars and I use these to mix my tattoo ink. I also have a chopstick here. This is my barn chopstick and I use this to mix mainly tattoo ink as you can see, um, but it comes in handy for other things as well. I have a fourth cup measuring cup and I have my activated charcoal and I have my vodka here. So we're gonna take some of the activated charcoal and this stuff will create a giant mess you guys. It'll get all over your hands, it'll get all over everything. So just keep that in mind as you're you know using it. It's not it's not easy to use this stuff and not make a mess. I put that in my jar there and then essentially put the same amount of vodka put that in my jar and then I use my chopstick and stir it down alternatively we have these nifty uh, leak-proof mason jar lids, so you can twist that on there too, and you can just shake it up. And let's see what we got. Lovely tattoo ink right there. And it's a great consistency. It's very, very dark, and it works really, really well. It's so easy to make and it's very cheap to make as well and doesn't have any toxic chemicals in it i've never had a rabbit with an allergic reaction to this and now that you got your jar filled up you can just keep that in your barn charcoal all over everything the only thing about this mixture uh when you're gonna go use it for tattooing is every time you use it you need to shake it up it's not a big deal um and then also make sure you cover it uh, because if you don't keep it covered, your vodka will evaporate and then you'll have to add more vodka to it. I've actually had it happen where all the vodka evaporated and uh, 
I just added more vodka and the charcoal still worked fine and I used that to tattoo and it worked fine. So don't worry too much uh, if that does happen, but preferably keep it covered. But yeah, it just makes a really nice, consistent tattoo. It's really a one-to-one -one ratio and um, also one of the things that I love about this tattoo ink in particular is that my hands are a mess. Typically with conventional like the tattoo uh, ink that you buy, it would be staying on my fingers for several days. Uh, but the good thing about the charcoal and vodka ink is that it actually comes straight off your fingers. And that doesn't mean that it comes straight out of the ear when you tattoo a rabbit though. It actually stays in because you're essentially inserting the ink in, under the skin into the ear. Um, so it won't wash out of the ear as you're tattooing, but it will wash straight off of your fingers. If you are newer to like breeding purebred rabbits and kind of the rabbit community and why we would tattoo in the first place, tattooing is actually required if you would like, hello. It's actually required if you would like to show your rabbits or register them or make them into grand champions, <laughs> uh, anything like that. So um, it's basically a nice way to keep records for your herd. So I usually end up tattooing the majority of my litters just so I can keep track of them and track their growth um, to a number essentially. Can we not eat my clothes? But that's why I tattoo my rabbits primarily um, and I just like to keep track of kind of who's who um, so that's why we tattoo them. We use numbing spray in the ear and then we tattoo a permanent uh, number or letter combination of our choosing uh, in their left ear. And that's how we keep track of who's who. If you are interested in learning how to tattoo your rabbits, I actually have done a plethora of live streams tattooing, but I've also made a how-to video. I will put it right up there. Uh, and hopefully that will help you guys. It's one of my older videos, but I still feel like it's a pretty good one explaining how to tattoo rabbits. And one of the most common questions I actually get about tattooing rabbits is how do you decide what to put in their ear? Because a lot of people think that it has to be like a certain combination of things, but honestly, it's whatever you decide that you want it to be. For instance, my tattoos always start with a TS for teal stone, and then I've just been counting up from zero and I'm in the 300s now. So uh, that's just how I do it. And that's how I've done it for a couple of years now. And it seems to be working really well. It's not really strict. It's just make sure your tattoo looks clean and is legible. And that's basically it. See the prettiest kitty? Miss Mirren has been dealing with uh, she had a puncture on her neck. Well, thank you. <laughs> and she went to the vet, got an antibiotic, and was good for two weeks, and then went downhill again, got another antibiotic, was doing good, started showing more signs of infection, and now we're doing some holistic stuff. And she is responding really well. Can you not? You're being ornery. We're in the same boat, Mir, and we're both recovering from stuff. Okay, I'm gonna clean off my tattoo pen a little bit because it also looks gross right now. I don't have a battery in this right now. I need to get a new battery for it. Uh, so I'm not actually gonna tattoo any rabbits tonight. Um, just gonna show you how, how this works. So this is the tattoo pen that I have. This is the TB Tat from All Things Bunnies. Um, and this is my favorite tattoo pen I've ever used. Um, I've used a KB Tat before. Um, I've tried a human grade needle. Granted, it wasn't a very good one. Um, and I've also had the clamp, um, where you just clamp um, and the letters and numbers are dots. Uh, and I, I think that I like this one the best out of all of them. The clamp would probably be my second, but the reason that I like the pen more than the clamp is because I'm able to write as light or as dark as I want to in the rabbit's ear. And I, uh, I have good, 
you know, good handwriting. And so I feel like I'm able to make my rabbit's tattoos look the best using a pen. It doesn't injure them or anything. It's not, it's not like super painful or anything like that. I mean, they don't like it, uh, but we use some numbing spray on their ear before we tattoo. We give it a couple minutes to set in and then we go to town using the tattoo pen. It's just basically on the end of it. You can see the little needle coming out there. And so what we're gonna make, if you unscrew this head here, this is the actual needle part of it. And this is what they look like when they're sold. And typically these things run about four, five, six dollars a piece, which I think is absolutely crazy. My needle's a little bit dirty. Um, it's a barn, what are you gonna do? This needle actually doesn't really need replaced yet, it just needs cleaned with a lot of alcohol. But I always wanna keep a needle as kind of a template because essentially, as you can see, let's see if I can get this close enough. So you have the tip of the needle and then it goes about, if you see where it kind of bulges out down here, the needle stops above that bulge and then this bulge here sits on the inside of the tattoo pin and it, it inserts into that little that little knob inside of it um, so you want a little bit of headspace to be able to attach this to your tattoo pin now for my situation uh, i use shrink tubing so this is heat shrink tubing this is what i use it's three sixteenths uh, heat shrink tubing and I'm gonna link all of this stuff you guys in the description below to help you out um, But this is I just got it off Amazon um, and then also you can get Human grade tattoo needles off of Amazon as well So that's what these look like and as you can see they are much longer than we want them to be this, Here's our rabbit tattoo needle and then here's the human grade needles. So obviously we need to do a little bit of modifying. Um, I'm also gonna put the sizes of tattoo needles that I would typically buy in the description below because there are lots of different sizes. There are three that are my favorites. One in particular is my favorite. Um, and I'll, I'll put all of that in the description. So. I'm gonna open this and we're gonna look at these individual needles here. So here's what the big needles look like. And be very, very careful when you're messing with these, you guys, because I have stabbed myself with these before and it does not feel good. It feels awful um, and it will, it'll definitely leave a mark. So just be really careful when you're, when you're dealing with these. Don't drop them, don't mess with them too quickly. Um, so what you're gonna need, you're gonna need your needles, you're gonna need your shrink tubing, you're gonna need a little bit of super glue. Maybe, sometimes you don't always need the super glue. I use it because I like them to be nice and secure in the shrink tubing. And you're gonna need a lighter. And you'll need some pliers. Look at my old rusty pliers. They have been left out in the rain a couple of times too many. So. Basically what I do, because I said I like to have a template here, um, and obviously if you have never bought a needle before, you're not going to have a template. Um, I used a needle that I had bought as my first template, and I've just been going off that ever since. I'm going to try to show you guys as clearly as possible, but here are these needles side by side, okay? and try to get them as evenly as possible up at the top there. It's hard to focus sometimes on these little tiny details. <laughs> I need to cut this long needle where this bulge starts on that uh, shrink tubing. So about right there. I'm gonna go ahead and cut this about where I think it needs to be. And be careful when you cut this because you just wanna make sure that you're holding onto it because God forbid the needle fling and like fling into your face or your eye or something. I actually like to use my uh, water bucket here, cut it inside there, and then when it does clip off, um, it falls into the bucket. Okay, so now it's clipped. And now we've got this smaller section of the needle here, which is what we wanted. 
Hi, baby. So I actually did a pretty good job matching these up. As you can see, that's about where I wanted it. Just cut it a little bit shorter than that shrink tubing there. Now what I need to do, I'm gonna set my needle aside for right now and I need to match up how much shrink tubing I need. So I'm gonna put the shrink tubing right next to this template needle here and I'm gonna cut it. I can usually mark it with my fingernail pretty good. I'm gonna cut it where my template ends there. Much easier to cut the shrink tubing than it is the needle. So that's the shrink tubing. So now that I've got my shrink tubing and my needle cut, this is how the needle's gonna fit in there. Just wanna make sure that there's enough room. I know I've tried my hardest to get it as close as possible to my uh, template there, but still sometimes I'll need to modify it a little bit. Um, but now what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna hold onto my needle using my pliers here, and I'm gonna put a little super glue on this thicker part up at the top here. So just a little bit, it doesn't need a lot, like a drop there and try not to get that on anything like my pants. Now I'm gonna fit my shrink tubing up on it right there. You wanna stop right past that thick point right there. And now we've got, we've got it right where we want it. <laughs> now you're gonna use your lighter. You don't wanna like put the fire right up against the shrink tubing because you can scorch it. You just wanna get it warm and you can watch it kind of shrink as we do this. Alternatively, you can use a hair dryer, that works too. Um, but I just find that the lighter makes it go pretty fast. And then, once I have it to this point, I like to roll it just to make it nice and straight. So I'm gonna show you guys how I sort of roll it. Torch it a little bit more. and it will shrink and sometimes your super glue will come out a little bit at the front of it, but that's okay. It just means it's nice and tight on there, which is what we want. We don't want this, you know, falling out as we're using it on rabbits or anything. And that's basically done. I just need to cut a little bit of the excess off the bottom. When my shrink tubing shrank a little bit, I think it actually made it a little bit longer. So let's compare it to the original here. Yeah, the shrink tubing is just a teeny bit long down here, so I'm just gonna trim it. Just make it the exact same size as my original, because I wanna keep close to the original. So that's my new needle. It looks really good. And now I can insert it into that little notch in there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of muscle the first time. One of my friends actually says that the 3 16 doesn't fit hers. Uh, it has to be just a teeny bit bigger for hers. So you might have to play around with the shrink tubing, but there it is inserted. And then the head goes over it like this. And now we have a brand spanking new tattoo needle in there, DIY. And it saved us a ton of money. Because like I said, these things are so expensive and they really shouldn't be. And they're so easy to make. Um, and I found that being able to make them homemade like this allows me to change out the needle a lot more. And I end up getting a lot neater and crisper tattoos when I'm able to change it as much as I want to instead of trying to use the entire life of the $5 needle that I bought, you know, from a vendor or something. So. Um, it's very nice to be able to have these. And because I did put the super glue in there, it's still a teeny bit loose. So I'm gonna leave this to just dry and like let the super glue cure overnight um, before I actually do use it. I'll actually probably use it tomorrow um, if I don't wanna use this one, but this one actually is probably still good. But now I don't have to make my next one because I did it for you guys. So that is how to make a DIY tattoo needle and a DIY tattoo ink. 
Illyria has come out here to model for you guys. She is one of my sweetest rabbits. Um, and if you are new to my channel, I breed creme de argents. Illyria was tattooed with my homemade uh, tattoo mixture and homemade needle. And that is what her tattoo looks like. They do stand the test of time. So they do look really, really nice. And I'm happy with how, you know, they stay in the ear. They don't, I mean, every tattoo will fade, but they don't fade out. They look really nice as they, you know, get a little bit older. So um, it honestly works just as well as anything store-bought and you can avoid all the toxic, you know, chemicals and possible allergies that your rabbits might have to, you know, store-bought tattoo ink and just make it yourself at home. And it is so easy and just a lot better in my opinion. So you are so sweet. <laughs> Well guys, I hope that this video was helpful to you and if you do attempt to make your own tattoo ink or needles, I would love to hear about it. So put that down in the comments down below. If you do try it, let me know how it goes. There's also gonna be a blog post that goes along with this video uh, and that will also be in the description down below with all the product links as well. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and with that, I will see you guys in my next one. Bye guys.